Yeah. Yeah. Congress also 
in federal court trying to fight for her daughter because you can't refuse people treatment at the ER. That's illegal. Yeah, it's illegal. So, what the hell? Well, yeah, because at least they're going to get it. Yeah. I mean, it's sad that she lost her daughter, but she never even happened. But yeah. And after trying to make sure that that doesn't happen to anyone else's family. I don't know, someone I really believe in. I, I moved up here. I met her in LA at a couple of fundraisers because I was working with like 51 congressional candidates. Mm -hmm. I met her and I heard her story and like, I don't know, there's something about some people who have just like been through really hard shit in their lives that you can just tell that they get it mm -hmm. and they care. Yeah, totally. Um, so after meeting her, she gave me an offer. I like moved up my whole life in my car from LA one week later. Oh, wow. I was like, okay, time for change, let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> Can I ask what hospital it was that did that? Um, yeah, oh, it's one, it's the one up, um, north by, like, like, kind of Sunderland area, or Centennial, oh, it's Centennial Hills Hospital. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so illegal, I'm sure they're, I'm surprised they haven't tried to settle out of court. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Because, yeah, it's got to be some huge backlash. I see one of the, what did you think of what happened to that that kid in England, Alfie? Did you hear about that? Oh, no, what happened? So, this is kind of just interesting, you know, because they have universal health care there. Um, so, there's this little boy named Alfie. He's not even two years old, and all of a sudden he came into the emergency room with swelling in his brain and they didn't know why. And um, they just, they just the hospital there just decided he wasn't going to make it because he was on um, oxygen and they basically put him into a coma. And so they decided to just take him off life support. Without the parents' consent. Are you serious? Well, yeah, because they're allowed to do that there. Yeah, because it's when the government's providing the health care, they have the right to do what they yeah, want. Like, That's ridiculous. Not there. It actually happens a lot in England. Um, and so it sucks. So, so the Vatican was willing to take him. They were gonna like pay to like go get him and, and treat him there. And they actually like put policemen in his room and refused to let the parents let him leave. And they took him off. As I said, they took him off uh, off uh, support. And then. Uh, they expected him to die within like a few hours, and he ended up living still three yeah. days later. And his dad was giving him mouth to mouth, and he ended up dying. And, and, yeah, and they refused to move him. They had police there and everything, refused to move him. Yeah. And that happens there a lot, unfortunately. So that's terrible. I hope Centennial Hills gets what's coming. Oh, they will absolutely pay for it. That's super early. Oh my god. Actually, yeah. I'm going to start with the two. I'm going to start with the You know, because I don't think that that automatically means that we should do away with universal health care, but it just sucks when our media is so biased that they refuse to even talk about it. Well, I mean, like, you know let's, what I mean? let's have a reasonable discussion. Exactly. And, like, every, I think everyone who will directly use their health care. Yeah. But the systems, the systems in other countries work, you know, sometimes better than what we have currently, but that doesn't mean they're perfect. So let's, let's fucking perfect it. Exactly. Let's make it so that we don't have situations like that, you know? Yeah. The like government aid, but still having, a, uh, in the end, the, the, the parent have the right. Oh, yeah, you know? of course. I mean, that makes sense to me. I don't see why it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I haven't seen, like, the only, the only news sites that I saw, because I was following that Save Alfie, like, fan page, and apparently one of my friends told me, because I, I, I posted about it, and they are like, oh, well, that's, like, a super conservative media. And I'm like, well, honestly, I've been looking in all the other ones, and no one's ever talked about yeah. it. You know, because it, it kind of gives it in that weird life. But like you said, like to, to me, that's a perfect time to talk about those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's an example of where this can go wrong. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Exactly. In whatever system we implement. Exactly. Yes. 
I think when people are afraid to hear challenges to their ideas, it means that they don't have a good understanding of them. Mm -hmm. Because like, if you if you understand what you're fighting for, and you also, if you're confident in like being able to make it work, mm -hmm. then like fucking accept the criticism, learn from it, take it, improve the idea instead of just saying like, oh no, that means you want to, you know, that you don't want anyone to have healthcare. No, that, that doesn't. That's not what they were saying. They're saying that there's some problems, let's work on it. Exactly. Yeah, how can we improve on that? Exactly. And that's like with most ideas, you know, I think that that's the best thing to do, is be able to just talk about something. But no one has good, like, open conversations anymore. And, um, especially social media age. Oh, I know, that's the worst place to talk about anything. I'm like, I've never, uh, I've never seen anyone successfully convince each other. In one of their like twenty comment Twitter battles or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Oh my god. You're <laughs> gorgeous. You are gonna look gorgeous. Yeah, I mean you're gorgeous already, and I'm all thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, sorry, I'm all in front of the camera.
being quiet, but obviously that's good, but I don't know if it's going to be working. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They're really small cabins, too. It's like three to four feet tall. Oh, yeah, like that. Thank you. So. But I did go really quick. I mean, I'm talking to you, but I don't know. So, like, I have four hours of each one. I tried to go out. Oh, it's like they said. <laughs> So are you hoping to be able to run for office? Do you want like, to you know, like, keep a little politics? I don't know. I don't know that I need to be the one at the front of the scenes. I just, I like, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I like policy and stuff. I like talking to people. Yeah. I don't know if that's something I ever want to do or if I just want to. I mean, I don't even really like campaigning. It's, it's like hard. It's not a healthy lifestyle. I'm only doing it because I really I think it's important this year in particular. Oh yeah. I mean, because I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> but I don't know. I kind of want to go. Most of my experience was working in like the Middle East and in India. Um, I might want to go back to living internationally again. Cool. What'd you do in the Middle East? Um, so my uh, training is in negotiation. Okay. So I was working on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for a little bit and on like. Um, Refugee and like militia research as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> How was your experience with that? Like, that's intense. No, no. It's, I mean, I I love the Middle East actually. It's, I love living and working there. Um, the conflicts that are going on right now are they're not in a good spot. So it's, I don't know. And that was part of it too. Like, it felt a little bit hopeless in some yeah. ways. Or like, I had limited ability to affect change. Because like, my Arabic is still pretty mediocre. Um, like, I don't, I'm not from there. So I felt like I could do more here, at least for the time being. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you think is the best like resolution for Israel and Palestine? I mean, I believe in a two-state solution. Uh, <laughs> that's getting getting farther and farther away from looking like a possibility with the current people who are in power there. But yeah. <laughs> I know, and I can see like what you saw. Yeah. Because they, they assume that you're a student. Yeah, you just assume that that's all of these students in the last year, like eight years old. Yeah, I see. No, it's hard because I know like Israel has tried to get them out of that. But then they won't even accept it. And they refuse to even acknowledge that they exist. Well, the PA has acknowledged Israel as a country and like the right to be there. but. The, the governance is still really bad on the Palestinian side, and then the Israeli government also is becoming a lot more um, like pro settler because that that kind of faction of the party is taking over a lot. So they're they're just like really bad leadership on both sides, and most everyone I know who lives there is just like they want whatever everyone else wants. They want to be able to go to school and send their kids to school without like. You're getting shot. They want to, you know, gain Seattle probably. Right. <laughs> they want to be able to make enough money for the community. They want peace. Both of them want their own states. But no one's doing it because they're just like, oh, politics. Yeah. Well, they want to be able to make money. Yeah. Like, they don't want to be able to make money. Do you think any of it has to do with religion, which is like, which makes it even more complicated? I mean, of course, to some extent. Yeah. But we're talking about it like not as much as people make it out to be. Like, most people are. There are some radicals from our religion. Oh, totally. There are radicals. Most of the radicals are Christian radicals. There are actually a lot of people don't know that there's oh, a lot of like very active. I don't know if I'm going to talk. Oh, I am going to talk. But yeah. most of the people are just like average. They're like, well, we go to church or mosque or whatever, mm -hmm. synagogue, and we're also normal for the rest of the time. So it doesn't hurt. That's not like the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I thought it was because I thought that in certain places, like, like you find out that you can't even say you're Jewish because they'll kill you, right? Um, I mean, maybe in God.
Gaza, but I've, you can't even get into Gaza. And I've gone into the West Bank with Jewish friends a bunch of times. Oh, cool. Uh, no, this is neat. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious. No, I mean, like, the people are people. Like, if, if the difference would be if you said you're Jewish versus if you said, you know, I'm a Israeli or, or I um, am in, like, a I'm just lazy on the whole getting people might not be happy about that, but it's not because of the Jews, it's because it's part of the I don't know. 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 I know, and it's like, cause every time, like, if we, when we do like interfere, and in, I mean, I, I think the only thing we could do is just help the, the rebel side that's trying to yeah. help everything. I mean, well, what I would really love is for them to create a corridor so at least people who want to leave can and help.
Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it'd be, it probably wouldn't be good PR at all, but you could, you'd definitely look kind of like a, like Brad Pitt a little bit in Glorious Bastards. I want a hundred Nazi scouts. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that I'd look like Brad Pitt before, but you know, I'll take That's it. It's a huge compliment, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I was just thinking the hairstyle. It's the hairstyle. I'm like, I want 1,000 Nazi scouts. Everybody <laughs> is. <laughs> Not opposed. I really don't like Nazis, so. Right? Who does? I mean, well, well you know. uh, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I think we know who didn't say they didn't like them. Yeah. Bernie Sanders is really going to make it? Well, I'm pretty sure he's running again. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. And some polling came out recently that had Elizabeth Warren like way ahead of him as far as like, people are saying that they want. But he's still ranked the number one most popular politician in the US. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what's going to happen. It's just so, I honestly, like, okay, like, no politics at all, okay? I just think Donald Trump and, and Bernie Sanders, they just have the most unique, funniest voices. They do. You know, they do. I just want to see them debate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bernie. You know, I do that. And then yeah. Bernie's going to be like this the whole oh my time. God. <laughs> Two New Yorkers going at each other. Oh my God, right? <laughs> I just think it'd be great. I hope <laughs> South Park does next. So <laughs> you hear me, Trey, Matt? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, they're probably going to feel it. with the whole Kanye thing and everything. Oh my God, seriously. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be another one where Kanye invites Donald Trump into the closet. <laughs> Oh wait, or was that? Oh no, that was the Tom Cruise one. I don't know. That's the next step. Like, I do this every morning. Like, what, what should I do to make it look best? 
Um, you can do a blow dry. You blow dry it if you want to, mm -hmm. but just comb it and go. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Yes. You might get addicted to short hair after. Do this. I do I not need to like put any product in or like mousse it back or whatever? Yeah. Mousse it back would be great. I mean, like I bet whatever product you have at home to dry your hair now would be even better. It would be just mm -hmm. great, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you, you you might get addicted to the short hair. <laughs> I'm just gonna. It's very possible I will, because I I always put up my hair anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. I know I miss it all the time, but I, it took me six years to grow it back, so I'm like I have to wait a six while. Six years? Because oh. I kept cutting it. Oh, okay. Every time it would get somewhat close, I'd be like, eh, and then I cut it back yeah. to short again, and so then finally I got it this long, and I'm like I, I have to wait. I have to wait at least probably like another five years. <laughs> Plus I do acting now and it really, if I had short hair like I did, it would only, it would limit my roles. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that makes sense. So now I'm like, I really do have to do it like longer, but I miss it all the time. I really do. Like if, if I got a big role that asked me to cut my hair short, like, be like, yeah. down for it maybe. Yeah, you'll see you'll have more time to play with your makeup. <laughs> you'll come up with different skill, like different ideas because you'll just have time. Yeah.
You're definitely gonna stand out in the crowd. Oh yeah. Well, all these people know me because they've seen me at every forum because I'm always with her. So I'm just gonna be like, bitches, we here. <laughs> we out here. <laughs> Since healthcare is the big thing, yeah, please tell her about the whole Alfie story. I will. I'll make sure to let her know. Because I just, it was so, I think that's just so heartbreaking. And then when no one talks about it, because of, again, the, the inclinations, which pisses me off, I'm like, no, it needs to be talked about. How yeah. can we, how could we, you know, have healthcare for everybody and make sure that something like that can't happen? Right, exactly. Oh, I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> you look like uh, Posh from uh, Spice Girls. From Spice Girls, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. yes, I dream. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. Now we just gotta do the wine. You're up soon. <laughs> Get ready. Hey. What what type of cuts are you guys getting? Getting it all off. Woo! Yeah, girl. It's the perfect time to do it. Yeah, it's gonna get real hot. I wish I was more It's gonna get hot. I admit the first time. Love with it. 